time to take a trip down memory lane. Awesome. Come on. <laughs> Tell us the truth of what happened on Sauna Sunday. My uh, my job was to pick up the pick up the baptismal pool. I went and did that. I went and filled that thing up <laughs> and put those elements in. And the next morning, just water <laughs> running down steam and I was like so so Catherine Pilbrow is the first person to get baptized yes and she takes a step into the pool and takes a step back out again in the way that Pastor John loves us um, he said get in the pool Catherine I reckon Nathan Flat had to go to hospital yeah. yes after sauna Sunday yeah. who said from the stage where is the little basket <laughs> first child dedication service so it was uh, it was Joel Chambers and he had been resting in his little capsule, right? And he's not there, and so John's like, oh, where's, uh... and he says, he says really quickly, where's Joel, the little basket? <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about his capsule. But it didn't really sound like basket. <laughs> and the best part was that this kid's grandmother was there and was deeply offended, <laughs> extremely offended. Guest speaker fails. Jeff Stanway was involved in the first ever guest speaker fail. How'd it go? Absolutely. Oh, Pastor John comes up and goes, you've got to go and pick up Pastor Jürgen Matisse. You've got to go right now. Grab some khakis, keys, cruise off. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this. I'm going to run out of petrol here. Pick him up and I'm like, I'm just not sure if we're um, going to get to the service. He goes, ah, where's your faith? <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. I'm about to pull up to, to fire and it's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> Before I can even get out to, to push the car, I look over to the passenger and Jürgen's out of the car and Jürgen's at the back, let's go! He's pushing <laughs> to church. Remember when you were the worship team? Remember we tried to do Father, you know, the Father Abraham song and he was just riffing. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know how it went. And <laughs> who doesn't, who doesn't <laughs> know Father Abraham? Me. Like, I remember when Simon Tawaii fell off the back of the stage <laughs> whilst drumming. Yeah. The amazing thing was he kept time. Yeah. His right. hand just up the top of the stage. <laughs> just that one. The amazing thing was is that I couldn't keep time even when I was just sitting at my, <laughs> at my drum set. <laughs> Did you ever get asked to solo? You were soloing all the time. Yeah. I do remember you'd give me the look if I ever went up high, you'd always give me this evil look like, bro, we're not you two. <laughs> I just used to pretend that I couldn't hear whoever was asking me to solo. Yeah. I was, oh, sorry, I can't, can't yeah. hear that. <laughs> all right, everybody. Why did I'm in love with Jesus always set off the fire alarms? We had three separate evacuations, didn't we? And an earthquake. It was earth shattering. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Dan Martin was band leading. Oh. There was this one service at the St. James Theatre. It was this beautiful, silent, quiet worship moment. And then you just hear out of nowhere, one, two, three, <laughs> keys. And the whole auditorium just loses it in laughter. My first conference that I actually got to lead at, I led the whole song with my fly down. <laughs> with a sign saying, you'll fly. And I couldn't figure out what they were trying to Did mean. Did you think like, they were just telling you you'll fly? fly. <laughs> I was like, We've always been a hangout church. Let's go back to where it all began. Tell us about John and Gillian's roast chicken hangouts. Every yeah. Sunday it was uh, just invite everybody and anybody, right? Yeah. The whole church, all 30 of us, yeah. come over for lunch. <laughs> the crock pot. Yeah. For me personally, it was the highlight of the week because I was pretty much an intern. And so it was like one guaranteed good meal. Gillian's an amazing cook and I'd eat as much as I could. How good were church camps? I remember the first church camp with Pastor Paul Dion, yes. our rancho, then we had Russell Evans at Kiwi Ranch, 2004. Pastor Paul, Pastor John and Gillian did a camp, and then Pastor Phil Pringle did a camp, and then 2008 was when we first started conferences. But yeah, just so many God moments and just mm. significant times, and people getting engaged, people getting married. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What's the B and K Eve story, Kelly? Oh, so I think Pastor Phil asked if there was any woman in the audience that felt like it was time that their boyfriend should propose and she put her hand up and um, so he took that moment and proposed to her. Yeah, so, yeah that's right. Got down think, on one knee. Exactly and uh, what they've got four children yeah. now and amazing contributors to the church, the Eves. But yeah, no, church camps were Brilliant. amazing. <laughs> I would agree with the statement that there's a few uh, men at a rise that might be punching above their weight grade in the wife department. Actually, I, I'm the oh, captain yeah, of this team. Actually, team. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how I don't know how it happens, Joel. I mean, you know, it's just yeah. <laughs> I think it comes from the top down. Yeah, right. I, it's lo I love true. Pastor John with yeah. all my heart, yeah. but he's the real captain of this team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does change lives, change lives mean? I personally love seeing someone walk into church 
and their journey that they go on and then who they become. Like it's really amazing seeing the impact and touch that a community of believers can have on someone. I love it when yeah, new people walk in and they're really searching for something and their lives just go from you know the struggle and you can just see the Holy Spirit touch them and everything changes. Mm. It's amazing. just one by one. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So we've talked about uh, changed lives in church. What about changed lives in our community? I remember um, in 2008 when we first fundraised for goats for World Vision. Skip ahead to 2013 and I'm hosting John in Malawi. To actually see the lives change through um, the contribution that Arise has made. I think over time we've had over 800 kids sponsored. Wow. Wow. And I remember that one story when we were in Malawi. I remember the one thing you wanted when we were there was for some kid to run up with a photo of a family from Arise. So here's my sponsor. And then on the last day, remember that, that child runs up, runs back to their house, comes back in with a photo of... The um, Van Ash family. The Van Ash family. Wow. Awesome. The one verse that I'm thinking about is that verse in 2 Corinthians where it talks about as your faith grows, the area of activity around you right. will grow and then you'll reach nations beyond you. Yep. It's so cool to be part of a church that has a spirit of expansion of it. Yeah. And, you know, whether that's um, Winita in uh, Whangarei, you guys in the deep south, yeah. Ben and Amy in Christchurch, uh, Ronnie and Lynn, like overseas. Right. It's just that spirit of expansion. Mm. Yeah. And um, that's, the, that's the church that, that I want to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. absolutely. Same. Yeah.